Hi guys, I'm back. I'm going to show you some things that I got uh, last weekend at Goodwill. This weekend at a new thrift store I'll tell you about. Not new, but new for me. And then I'll talk to you about one or two of my latest treats. me again. I am going to do a little bit of lunch prep for next week. I'll show you what I have going on. Okay, so I bought these bowls. It was an eight pack and they're made by Rubbermaid. The reason I like them is because they're big. They're pretty big and a salad for lunch is um, a lot of times my go-to. I just grab some um, spring mix and then I grilled some chicken and that's usually what I have for lunch honestly unless the leftovers look good I also grabbed this it looked really fun you know what isn't fun about salad dressing um Panera though Fuji apple and I don't really know if I like it but I'm gonna try it so I'll show you once I cut up some uh chicken what it looks like Okay, so as you can see, I'm almost out of salad. This makes about three lunches for one of the smaller ones, but that's about all really um, I think I want this week. I might take uh, leftovers or I also got some pasta um, and I might have that with chicken also, the little stuffed tortellini. So this is my Pampered Chef um, scissors. So what I do is I just chop up the lettuce so that it's a little more user friendly. This is with one hand. So I'm gonna put the camera down and um, hold the bowl still with the other hand and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so I just finished um, chopping the lettuce. I did go ahead and finish this off because, you know, come on. What else am I gonna do with that, right? So three lunches worth. Um, anyway, now I'm gonna cut up some chicken. Okay, so here are my chicken salad bowls. It's about a half of a chicken breast on each, and um, that is plenty for lunch. This is actually a pretty big lunch. It doesn't maybe, I mean, there's my hand. It doesn't maybe look that much, but it's definitely enough to fill me up. Another thing I've been doing is putting these on top. Oh my gosh, they're so good. It's just a tiny little single serving and I've been, well, kind of been doing my salads the morning of, but these shouldn't matter if I put these on uh, the night before or a couple nights before because it's just got the pecans, the um, cranberries and pepitas. And then <clears throat> for one of the days, this is a dressing or marinade, at least one of the days, I'm gonna try this. I love it with um, chicken and like when I'm cooking, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of that. I'm gonna try my new Fuji apple one day. I'll probably do two days and one day. Okay, so I went ahead and sprinkled it on for tomorrow's salad. I think I'll probably wait on the other two. It takes literally just a couple minutes, um, seconds. Um, <clears throat> from start to finish, um, from getting the lettuce out, getting the chicken out, chopping up the chicken, it has taken me about eight minutes, and that included um, like putting everything away except for this stuff. So not bad. I'm not going to put any dressing on tonight because it will just make the uh, lettuce super soggy. So I'll just stack these up in the fridge and they'll be ready for lunches. Okay, I just had to come back on and say I just tried this. Oh my gosh, it is so good. It's like got a really tart apple flavor. It's delicious. And this one I already knew I liked. It's so yummy. I'm gonna have good lunches this week. Hello, happy Saturday. I am in Sprouts. I am looking for, well, I came what I, I, I let me try that again. I got what I came for, but now I'm looking at um, stuff to make lettuce wraps. They're so good. They're um, P.F. Chang copycats and they're delicious. So let you know if I find everything. So far, so good. Okay, so just found this. This looks really cool. Chipotle seasoning, sugar-free. 
it actually has stevia in it, which I'm not a huge fan of, but when it's in things, I don't mind it. I just don't like it as its own sweetener. There is just so much good stuff here. I feel like when I'm here, I just want to be like super healthy and get all the things. And then I see the cookie aisle. This is what lately I hate most about mask wearing. It's ridiculous. So I just got done in Sprouts and I got some goodies. Not, nothing crazy. I'll show you when I get home. Okay, I'm home from Sprouts and I thought I would show you what I got. Okay, so these I got to make uh, the lettuce wraps. I got these, they're called Rainbow, whoa, that was up close and personal. They're called Rainbow Radishes. I think that's what it says. Anyway, um, the only one that's really rainbow is the white one, but I love white radishes and I haven't found them forever, so I thought I would try those. These were on sale. I love the originals, which are right here, and I thought I would try these since it was um, they were like four for five bucks, which is pretty cheap. Then, also, oh yes, red vines. That was not today's purchase. I also got green onions for the um, lettuce wraps. I went through my fridge not too long ago and got rid of a bunch of stuff, so I didn't know what I had, so I got this little baby uh, sesame oil. I got hoisin sauce. I got some soy sauce. And I mean, these things don't expire for like three years. So if I do have some already, not a big deal. And uh, did I say soy sauce? I think I did. And then rice vinegar. So all those go into the making of the lettuce wraps as well as water chestnuts. They're so good. So anyway, and I already have garlic and ginger here. So I didn't need to buy those. Um, these just looked so fun. I almost just said looked That's frightening. These looked so fun. So they're salted garlic chips. They're literally just garlic cloves dried and salted. I'm not sure if anyone will want to come near me after I eat them, but that's okay. I prefer socially distanced friendships at this point. Just kidding. Um, anyway, so I thought I'm going to try one and see how it is, but then I thought I could always crunch them up on top of a salad. Then I know everybody and their mom or dad or friends use this already, but I didn't have, I love the Watkins brand. I didn't have any of this. So I thought I would try the everything bagel sesame seasoning. And I already showed you this in the store, but I did end up at, uh, getting the Chipotle sugar-free seasoning and I'm going to grill chicken today. So I will try it out. And then <clears throat> I make our own hand sanitizer and I knew we were almost out of aloe vera gel. So I got that um, there. It's a pretty big tub. It is 32 ounces. And um, I mix this with rubbing alcohol and that is it. And this seems to keep, like my hands don't look really terribly dried out. And I use this stuff like, I mean, I would say minimally 15 times a day, probably more. So um, I haven't bought this brand before, but it was, seemed fine. Not too much stuff in it besides the aloe vera, just some stabilizing ingredients or whatever. Then <clears throat> this is currently as we speak um, in my toaster oven. These are, I love the uh, other sandwich thins. They're just like, I don't know, they're like a cross between a sandwich and a bagel and I love them. But these just sounded really good. They're made with cauliflower. Don't know how that's gonna be. Veggie herb seasoning, but look at how yum that looks. And I'm gonna probably spread some avocado on it and then some of this. I'll let you know how it tastes. And that is all, I already showed you these. So yep, that is all I got at Sprouts. I did get, um, Monroe's mustard greens and I feel like I already oh and some zucchini but I already put those away okay this is what they look like they got a little extra toasty I wasn't watching but that's okay and then I'm just scooping on these little um individually packed uh avocado there's they're not guacamole they're just plain old avocado um I'm going to see how that is, and then I'll let you know.
It's really good. Hi, welcome back. I wanted to show you some of my garage sale finds from this weekend. I'm so excited. It was not raining, number one, which we always welcome rain here in Arizona, but when it happens on a Saturday, I'm just torn. I love the rain, but I love my garage sales. So this weekend, I got my garage sales, not my rain. Anyway, it is supposed to storm again coming up soon, so we'll see. But I wanted to show you a couple of things that I got. Okay, so this first thing I got, it's a brand new, looks like it's never ever been used, box of Word Family flashcards. And the way I think I'll use these in my fam, in my family, I was reading the card, in my classroom, which is my family, um, is that I will put some at a um, uh, center, as a center activity. Now, this one, a little bit too simplified for my third graders, but there are some other ones that are um, harder and I can use those. So they have some examples on the back and maybe I will make a card that says something like um, using four of the word family cards, write a story. I don't know just something fun like that to get them thinking about word families because honestly that's how I learned to read when I was in school we practiced word families and that's kind of what um, foundations still does foundations is the uh, phonics program that we use in my district um, I really like it in that uh, the third grade foundations talks more about um, sound alike words like um, pain and pain or uh, different ways to use the same word like bowl. So anyway, I like it for that because that's really where we should be as third graders. Um, some still struggle with the basics and you know, that's never going to not be true. But anyway, I just really love that I could pair this with whatever um, vowel family team we're working on or you know, those kind of things. Anyway, that was one find. I paid a whole dollar for these. I'm super excited. Then, OMG, I'm super, that was so stupid. I'm really excited about this next one. I don't know if this, yes, this is how it came. Craft Essentials. I want to say I see this at Hobby Lobby. I don't know. I could be wrong. And I'm not 100% positive. Oh, yep, I am because I've just read two-inch finished letter jar. So this is what came in. But look, they are huge Scrabble tiles. Oh, isn't that fun? So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with these. Um, that seems to be a common theme of my life. I don't know what I'm doing, but I know I'm doing something. So um, I don't know if I might use this because I'm guessing there's probably 26 letters and not duplicates. Could be wrong about that too. It's happened once or twice. Um, just had to make a word. So anyway, I'm not really sure if I'm going to put this out like for the kids to do something fun with, or maybe I'll do some wall art in my house. I don't know. But having just one letter might make it a little harder. But anyway, maybe we could use it as an actual Scrabble game. I have to count. Maybe there's more than 26. What do you think? I don't know. Also, maybe it tells me down here. Um, no. Oh, also it says Joann's. So not Hobby Lobby. It says Joann's. All the things I would learn if I would just read. But anyway, super excited about these. Um, also, the, I've said also a very lot of times today, this would look cute just sitting in my craft room with like a fun bow tie on it or something. So I'll put those. No, because no, that might get in the way of filming. So those I got at one garage sale I stopped at yesterday. Then I have a humongous stack of books right here beside me so I'm happy um, I went to an estate sale and those can be either good or sketchy so this house was in a neighborhood that was you know not far away from my house at all sorry coffee break I'm reusing the coffee uh, cup I got yesterday um, so the house was actually really pretty on the inside and estate sales used to kind of 
I don't know, they used to kind of twist me out a little bit because you're like watching people go through someone's clothes in their closet and that just always seemed odd. But I don't know. Anyway, I, I did stop at this one and this lady whose home we were in had a great cookbook collection. So, and I love cookbooks. I don't usually use them just different, but um, I do love them and I love to look at them. So this one, I don't think I have, but I love Trisha Yearwood's recipes. She has some great recipes. This is an older cookbook and you guys, it was a $30 book. I got it for $2. I mean, come on. Um, it was, when did she publish this? Trisha's Table. I don't know. And a foreword by Garth Brooks. Oh, it's not old. 2015. I mean, six years. That's not really old. Five and a couple months. So this one might be um, a second one because I think she had one out a long time ago. But anyway, the pictures, you know, I love the, the pictures. Um, this looks delicious. Angel hair pasta with avocado pesto. Yum. So I'm going to try maybe to find a couple in there that I like. Then this one, okay, I'm going to tell you how I feel about this and maybe you'll think I'm crazy and you might be right. This one, I love anything Food Network. It's just always fun. But this guy, I don't know who this guy is. His name is Dave Lieberman. That's all I know. But he uh, has some darn good looking recipes like the classic American chicken wings, for example. I mean, yum. Yum. Can you see? I'll hold it in front of my head. Anyway, just really pretty pictures because really that's what I like to look at is pictures of food. <gasps> Bow ties with pesto, feta, and cherry tomatoes. It's just the way that food looks so pretty like that. Anyway, here is the part where I may be crazy. Um, no, I'm not. Well, I am, but you know. So this was uh, the way I found the book. It is signed, and this lady's name is or was Susan. I don't know if an estate sale always means you've passed on, or maybe you're just in um, a different place being cared for. But anyway, it says, Susan, hope you get lots of use out of this. Enjoy, Dave. So, a signed copy. I just get all goofy over. Like, I'm so excited when the author signs their book. I have a lot of kids' books that are signed, and at uh, Barnes and Noble, you and actually on Amazon, you can order copies that have been signed. And I just think that's so cool. But wait, there's more. Inside were these two envelopes. Envelopes. This one, nope, I'll show you this one first. This one was, is a invitation, um, Saturday, April 8th, 2006. And this chef, Dave, came to the uh, golf club that this gal apparently was part of. And this shows like the um, invitation and what was going to go down the afternoon of golfing and some entertainment things that were going on. So this beautiful invitation was in there. I'm trying to get this down so I don't fold it over. This beautiful invitation was in there. And then also this one, it had like a little sticky sticker, puffy sticky sticker, but this was, and it looks like, like a fancy bow tie, uh, tuxedo kind of thing. And this was the menu. <gasps> it's like, that is so cool. So I got these things with the cookbook and I just feel like I'm going to sound goofy right now, but I just feel like in a way it's a way to honor this lady's fun memory just to keep it and also enjoy and um you know just have it as part of my cookbook collection now so okay I'm done being a goofball probably I'm not but anyway got those two things so that was the extent of what I got at garage sales estate sales yesterday but then I met a sweet friend for coffee and I had a little bit of time before we were meeting so I was already by a store. I'm oh, sorry. My nose is like super itchy today. I think that means I'm getting company or money or both. Maybe somebody's coming to my door with money. That would not be a bad thing. Anyway, I went to this other uh, thrift store that I'd never, 
I don't think anyway I'd ever been to. It's I don't know if it's a chain. I don't know if it's just here in Arizona. I don't. I have no idea. But it's called Savers. And I've already talked for 10 minutes. How is that even possible? Okay, I'm gonna talk quicker. So I went to this place and it was so nice inside. Like Goodwill, eh, you know, they're, they're, they're fine, kind of. And I only look at the books normally. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I'm not a huge fan of the other stuff at Goodwill. If you are, awesome. I have a theory though, that the difference between thrift stores and garage sales are that with a garage sale, you're actually sitting in your driveway with all your stuff. So you're going to represent yourself in a certain way. Like you're probably not going to have um, t-shirts with stains and holes and gross stuff in them. I'm just, you know, guessing. And when you donate stuff to Goodwill, I know I'm guilty of this. Sometimes like just, I just yank down stuff off of hangers and I shove it in the bag. I don't really check it before. I mean, hopefully it's all in decent shape, but I know that somebody else is going to check it. And you know, if it's nothing they could sell, they would just throw it away, I guess. Um, so I feel like there's not as much of a, uh, responsibility to represent your stuff in a certain way. I don't know. I'm getting cheesy now, but I feel like garage sales for that reason, you get better stuff. So anyway, I went to Savers and did I say that was the name of the place? I don't even know if I said it. Savers is the name of this other thrift store and it was so nice. It was, it looked super clean. I only looked at books again, but, um, cause I only had like 10 minutes before I had to leave to go to coffee, but I got this book. Now I have no idea what this book is about, but Jordan Sonnenblick, uh, wrote Drums, Girls, and Dangerous Pie. And I read that years ago. And I remember that being the coolest book. And I want to reread it now because of finding this book. But um, this is my receipt. It had a $1.79 sticker on the uh, book. And I brought it up to the register. And I felt a little bit silly only buying one thing, but I was only in there for a few minutes. So I brought it up to the register. It rang up 96 cents. So I paid a dollar for this book because they were having a sale. Anyway, um, I didn't even read what it was about. So let's learn together. It says, you don't need to be big or loud to be a hero. You just need to be brave. In sixth grade, bad things can happen to good kids. Bullies will find your weakness and jump on it. Teachers will say you did something wrong when you really didn't mean to do anything wrong. The kids who joke the loudest can drown out the quieter, nicer kids. Maverick wants to change all that. One of the last things his father left him was a toy sheriff's badge back when Maverick was little and his family wasn't in trouble. Now he likes to carry it around to remind himself of his dad and also to remind himself to make school a better place for everyone, even if that's a hard thing to do. Okay, now I really love this book. Um, the Secret Sheriff of Sixth Grade is a story about standing up for yourself and being a hero at home and in the halls of your school. Oh, I really love this. <gasps> okay, so... These are uh, Jordan. I don't know if it's a he or a she, but those are the other books written by this author. I've read the first two, The Drums, Girls, and Dangerous Pie, and After Ever After. They were both really, really good books. Based on what I vaguely remember about those books, they would not be ones that I would read out loud to my third graders. However, if you're an older grader teacher, um, comment below. Let me know if... Um, You've read any of her, uh, her books? I'm going to say her. And Jordan, if you're a man, I'm super sorry. Um, but if you, maybe it says something about the author. He, it's a he. I'm so sorry, Jordan. He lives in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania with his family. Okay, so if you've read any books by him, Jordan, <laughs> um, let me know in the comments. I want to see what you think of them. Okay, so I got to hustle. This is ridiculous that I talked this long. In fact, um, hold please. Okay, I just uh, paused and restarted the video because they get so long to download that it's crazy. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, last week, might have been, I don't know. Yeah, I think it was last week. It was the week that I got the... Um, little uh, wooden model for my son, the little wooden model um, that you can put him in different uh, 
poses for art. I think that was two weeks ago, last week. I who cares? Anyway, these are some of the books that I got at Goodwill that week. I got this one. I feel like I know something about this book, but I don't know enough about it that I actually have read it. So I am Nujud. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. Nujud, age 10 and divorced. So this is about a um, girl in, I'm not sure what country, Yemen. Yemen, it says. And it just looked horrible and interesting all at the same time. So I'm going to read that one one day. Then this one I thought looked really good. This appeals to the science geek in me. And um, they say your gut is your second brain. And this book, when I was paging through it, it actually said that. And I thought, you know what? That's interesting. So all about gut health, because, you know, apparently donuts aren't where it's at. Who knew? Um, this one oh, looks amazing. The Bookshop of Yesterdays. Oh, this looks so good. Um, it says part mystery and part drama. Ooh. Um, it was written in 2018, copyright date of 2018. Amy Meyerson is the author. Um, should I read you a blurb? Why not? A woman inherits a beloved bookstore and sets forth on a journey of self-discovery in this poignant debut about family forgiveness and a love of reading. Miranda Brooks grew up in the stacks of her eccentric Uncle Billy's bookstore, solving the in solving the inventive scavenger hunts he created just for her. But on Miranda's 12th birthday, Billy has a mysterious falling out with her mother and suddenly disappears from Miranda's life. She doesn't hear from him again until 16 years later when she receives unexpected news. Billy has died and left her the Prospero books, left her Prospero books, which is teetering on bankruptcy and one final scavenger hunt. When Miranda returns home to Los Angeles and to Prospero books, now as its owner, she finds clues that Billy has hidden for her inside novels on the store shelves. Is that fun? In locked drawers of his apartment upstairs in the name of the store itself. Miranda becomes determined to save Prospero Books and to solve Billy's last scavenger hunt. So, holding it so you can see the cover there. Um, she soon finds herself drawn into a journey where she meets people from Billy's past, people whose stories reveal a history that Miranda's mother has kept hidden, and the terrible secret that tore her family apart. It just sounds really good. And then um, I'm going to just keep going on books that I bought there. This series is one that my kids like, The Upside Down Magic. This one is called Sticks and Stones. I don't know if they're numbered. Yep, this one says book two. I know I have a few others. A few others? I think at least two others. Um, the Who Was series is awesome. I don't know if I have Leonardo da Vinci or not, but now I do. Um, and then the rest of these... Ah, Oh, no, one more that's a kid-ish book. Again, this would not be one that I would probably read in third grade. I'm positive um, because it says, in middle, middle school, words aren't just words. They can be weapons. They can be gifts. The right words can win you friends or make you enemies. They can come back to haunt you. Sometimes they can change things forever. So that was the little blurb on the back. It's by John David Anderson. Um, and this one, I'm not 100% sure I don't already own, might already own it, but it is copyright date of one day, <laughs> 2017, 2017, nope, 20, yeah, 2017, look at the writing, I mean, come on, I can't read. 2017, so it's not old, but I've seen it before and I very well may own it, but it looked fun, so I'm going to read it. If I like it, I'll do a book study on it. If not, I will not. The next ones are all for me. This one um, is written by the author of The Time Traveler's Wife, Audrey Niffenegger. Niffenegger, I think. Anyway, it's called Her Fearful Symmetry. It was named a best book of 2009 by The New Yorker, The Washington Post, and The Salt Lake Tribune. That's a good plug. Anyway, that one looks good. I'll come back and I haven't done a book um, review in a long time. I've read probably 30 books since I've done the last one. That's probably not true either. Maybe like 10 or 12. Um, Songs of Willow Frost. I got this one because the hotel on the corner of Bitter and Sweet is one that I own and I've actually given as a gift, I think, to my mom. 
I mean, I know my mom, but I'm trying to decide if I was the one who gave it to her or not. Anyway, maybe not. But um, this one is by the same author. So I thought that might be good. Um, it's set in Seattle, 1934, if I'm just looking really fast. So this is the much anticipated second novel by that author. Okay, this one I definitely gave my mom and uh, she really liked it. And then I gave her the sequel called Sitka's called Sitka's Journey, I think. And I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but I didn't own the first, I didn't own this one. So I bought this one, but I bought the Sitka's Journey. Um, they had a sale on Audible. And so I bought that um, for like $5. So I have the second one. So I thought I should probably read this one first. Then this one, you know how I love a good mystery, A Woman Alone. <sighs> house with darkest of secrets a woman who is the only one who knows who knows what she knows we don't know till we know you know but target always has really good uh, book picks i feel like and i feel like i know that book i've never read it but this is by the author of girl last scene and so it sounds really good this is set in venture illinois and then oh my gosh i saw this book and I just thought if anybody has a reason to complain, including myself, just stop it right now because this guy, I'm going to cry. This guy, um, the book is called Life is Good. He learned how to read at age 98 and he's talking about how glorious and amazing and wonderful his life is. So ours must be, you know, absolutely glorious and they are. Mine is. I'm sure yours is too. I'm sure this video is getting much too long, so I'll keep going. Anyway, one man's extraordinary journey through the 20th century and how he learned to read at age 98. Look at him. I just want to hug him. He looks like the best grandpa ever. But anyway, um, here's his quote. Things will be all right. People need to hear that. Life is good just as it is. There isn't anything I would change about my life. That's gratitude right there. So anyway... Can't wait to read that one. Then on to really quickly, I'm going to show you another book I just finished. This book I talked about um, last vlog, I think. Um, I read it in a night. I mean, it's super quick read. This author is so easy to read. Uh, Jamie Sumner, and here's her cute self in the back of the book. There she is. She also wrote Roll With It, which is a book that I'm reading right now. But this book was so good. I loved it. It's about a little girl who has, um, I don't want to ruin it. How can I not ruin it? There is an incident that happens that separates uh, her from her mother. And her mother uh, has some issues uh, with parenting, but this little girl uh, perseveres and she uh, overcomes, well, not overcomes, but she works through her issues with uh, sensory processing disorder, SPD. And it's just really good. I love her character. I love that she doesn't always feel really brave or good about things, but she just powers through anyway. And that's a great message for kids and adults. So this one highly would recommend reading. It's, uh, it's really good. And I definitely, definitely could read this to my third graders, but I, this is next on my list of things to do as far as, no, it isn't. This is one, two, third on my list of things to do for a book study. Cause it was really good. I have my two, um, the Owl Diaries and the Pug one next because they're really quick and easy ones. They only take me a couple hours to do. This one will take me several hours. So I'll do that. Then the last thing I wanted to talk about, look at me being almost done in under seven hours. Um, this book is so good. The Land of Roar. I'm not sure... Um, if any of you have read it, I talked about it in uh, several, several vlogs ago. I can't remember where I saw this. I want, I, I want to say I just saw it um, on Amazon. I don't remember. But then I went to the library and I checked it out months ago. I read most of it. And then I just like, I think it was right before the holidays, maybe. 
And then things just got weird over the holidays. We had lots of um, personal stuff going on with my dad. And um, so I put down the book for a while, picked it back up when it was, you know, almost due. Don't we always? And then I finished it and immediately ordered it from Amazon because I had to return it to the library, but I knew I wanted to read it to my kids. It is so good. I just finished yesterday the uh, uh, Read Aloud Write Along that goes with this. It's in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. Um, it's so good, you guys. I can't wait to read this to my kids. It's just magical and everything you want in an imagination story for kids. It's got some scary things, which, you know, imagination, right? And it's also got some really good messages. It's got some great character trait uh, lessons to be taught. I may or may not come on and do, you know, I probably will come on one day. I don't know what day and do uh, to pick like a few of my favorite books and what I feel like um, uh, skill wise could be best taught with those books. This one, definitely perseverance, definitely character traits. I say perseverance like as a theme in writing um, character traits growing up um, and creativity and imagination. Oh my gosh. It's so good. Anyway, if you want to check out that uh, read aloud ride along, it comes highly endorsed by yours truly. And it is in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. So Jenny McLaughlin is the author and it says believing is just the beginning. And it's a great, it's a great story. Anyway, here's the little blurb on the inside and the little picture. That guy's name is Cronky and he's bad news. Anyway, that is all I think I wanted to say right now. So if you have enjoyed any part of this vlog, cooking, uh, did I cook? No, I meal prepped a little bit. Um, uh, books, garage sales, thrift stores, anything like that, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you have not to help me grow my channel. I really appreciate you guys watching and listening and I wish you the best weekend and week coming up. Please remain hopeful about the world we live in. Bye guys.